Kevin, what is one thing that really stands out to you about this problem that you think I might want to include? I do have the squares, um, but forget, um, I'm looking for something else. Yes, I do have the squares, and I'm going to want to include. But there's something that's very, very important about this that I want to include. Yes, Sasha? Alternating the alternating signs. That's like the first thing that really stands out to me. Because automatically, when I see the alternating signs, I automatically know that I need to include this. Yes? Have to go and include that. So now, we look at this and we say, all right, first of all, alternating signs. Now, if this alternating sign we're going to start at 1, this would be negative, right? But since this is positive, I'm going to add 1. All right, so now that's going to make the first term uh, even, the second term odd. Um, now let's look at where we're starting and where our end is. It looks like we're starting at 1, and we're going to go all the way up to 20. So I'll, I'll say n equals 1, and we'll end at 20. Notice how I'm using n in this case. Last time I used i, we can use k, we can use p, we can use anything. Because if you put in 1 in for there, negative 1 squared, or negative 1 to the first power is negative 1. That would make the first term negative. The first term's positive. So they just put in 1 plus 1 is squared. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So it makes it positive. And then the next one would be negative. So now we need to identify the rule, which Nikki is the rule. What if you multiply, add, or divide, or just Well, you can go and go through this one. But if we're just going to try to just think about this one, yes, you can label them as 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, again, what do I need to do for this formula when I plug in 1 to get 1 over 1 squared? Put an n in for the squared, right? And there you go. That's your formula. OK? And that's it. That's all you guys got.